Good morning and welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the fourth webinar in the series we have uh, in preparation uh, of uh, the uh, soft launch of the North Sea program. Uh, today we are uh, here to uh, speak about small scale projects, the totally new uh, initiative in the program. Uh, and uh, we are here uh, with my colleague, uh, Sarah, and we will go through all the necessary or basic information uh, you uh, have to know about the uh, small scale projects. In the background, uh, Christopher and Femke are with us as well, uh, uh, helping us with the Zoom and Slido uh, uh, technicalities. Talking about technicalities, uh, uh, today, uh, uh, in this meeting, you are muted uh, and the webinar is recorded. Uh, it will be available uh, later this week uh, together with all the previous three webinars uh, we have had. Uh, the chat function is unabled, uh, so you cannot uh, use the chat function of the Zoom. Instead, uh, we will use Slido uh, uh, today to pose questions and hopefully we will be able to answer your questions in the second half of the webinar. Uh, so please uh, go to Slido uh, and use the enter code you can see uh, uh, after the hashtag 343152 or use the QR code uh, to see those two uh, questions we have. Uh, uh, as a kind of a warm up uh, uh, questions. Uh, and uh, uh, we would like to see your answers uh, very soon. So, where are you joining from? Uh, please enter your city, town, village uh, name, and mm -hmm. we will see it uh, soon uh, on the Slido uh, uh, surface. Uh, and the second question uh, with the same goal uh, you uh, answer. Uh, are you new to the North Sea program? One thing about Slido, there are two features that we have in Slido for this webinar. You can answer the questions that we pose, for example, here and a couple others that we'll ask during the webinar. You can also, there's a tab for where you put your own questions. So there are two tabs you can be using in Slido uh, during the webinar. Thank you. And now we are going to the Slido. No, I yeah. think uh, yeah. my colleague Christopher will share uh, a uh -huh. answers. On many of you already answered. So uh, Hamburg, Hamburg, <laughs> lots of hamburgers. Ab absolutely winner. Uh, <laughs> Unequivocally. By now, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I see a lot of uh, lot of colleagues uh, joining us from Germany. Uh, mm -hmm. obviously, but from the Netherlands and from France, uh, Flanders, yeah. So actually, we are kind of uh, covering the North Sea region. Uh, I give you 10 more seconds, maybe uh, those ones who are not who are not answering this question, just to uh, have a uh, full picture. Who are we in the room today? Oh, so uh, Copenhagen from Denmark uh, and Bruges, where we have our uh, oh, yeah. annual conference in two weeks' time. Yes. Yes. Uh, and Brighton. Britain. Brighton. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah. Someone is joining us from the UK. Cool. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's uh, for the first question. Uh, and then the second one, are you new to the program? Uh, so most of you are, or more uh, than a half uh, are familiar with the program already uh, in the previous uh, programming period, I guess. Uh, but uh, there is a significant uh, proportion uh, of people joining us uh, today who are new to the program, which is very good. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I still want to uh, encourage those ones who are not who are not new to the program to grab 
some new uh, organizations yes. uh, to to involve new uh, regions to new partners in your future projects it is always welcome and uh, 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 a very good idea to uh, to uh, have new partners yeah. on board absolutely thank you very much for your answers and now uh, the aim of the webinar what are we aiming for today yes, Sarah? it is a very good question <laughs> peter and in fact it's very simple uh, the aim of our webinar today is to give you as our project community or potential project community information about the main features of this new initiative called small scale projects in the interreg north sea interreg north sea program yes thank you very much very clear uh, a bit more uh, uh, breaking it down uh, what uh, we will do today uh, we will talk about uh, why uh, the program introducing uh, this new uh, uh, scheme, uh, which was never uh, ever used by the North Sea program before. Uh, then we are talking about the main parameters of the small scale projects. Uh, what is the main framework uh, of those projects? Uh, benefits for partnerships. Why a partnership should go for this scheme instead of going to a regular project. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also <clears throat> highlighting some differences and similarities to regular projects. Uh, we have also some, not many, uh, mm -hmm. but some limitations uh, to small scale projects. That will happen, uh, these first uh, agenda points uh, will happen, we will cover in the first half of the webinar, and then we will let you ask uh, questions and we will be hopefully uh, able to answer your questions in the second half of the webinar, uh, please again use for this uh, Slido and go to the tab uh, questions and answers and pose your question even during the first half uh, of the webinar. We will go uh, and answer them one by one. So why the program decided to have uh, small scale projects? Very good question and a good place to start, Peter. Um, the program committee who have been very involved in developing the new program for the Interreg North Sea uh, decided that it would be a very good thing to have not just regular projects, but also projects that are a bit shorter in, in time frame and, and smaller in scope. Um, this, they hope, will give the program some flexibility. And by that, I mean, um, we, will, we will use these small scale projects uh, in different ways throughout the program period. For example, <clears throat> for call one, when we will first accept small scale project applications, we are looking for projects uh, in the small scale project area that are, that are using the ideas that they have, but that would like to implement them in a shorter period. And we hope that these projects will attract new partners, new organizations to the program, organizations that haven't joined one of our projects in the past. Um, we are also looking for them to um, attract uh, regions, the new regions partners. So not just organizations in general, but the fact that we have new regions in our program is very important, especially at the beginning of the program. And we have new regions in the Netherlands, in Flanders, and we have a whole new country in our program. We're very happy to welcome France. There are three new regions in France that are joining the program. So these, these small scale projects in the first call, we hope to see uh, attract these new partners, these new regions, and give somewhat of a kickstart to the program, if you will. Um, the, 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 this purpose or the, these reasons for small scale projects in the beginning will be outlined in our guidance note for the first call. The guidance note is basically a set of guidelines for applicants who are hoping to apply in the first call. And we will be releasing that with the official launch of call one, which Peter will get to later in the webinar. Um, other, other ways that the program could use small scale projects throughout the program period are, for example, um, if we would like to at some point in the next seven years, focus on one or more of the spotlight teams, uh, which we will also get to a little bit later. Um, 
And another possible use for these is um, <clears throat> to allow short spurts of, of focused, uh, focused efforts on capitalization, for example. These are just some of the, the, the ways that the program preparation group has discussed we would use small scale projects. Uh, another reason uh, for having these is to address the new objectives, the new priorities in the program. So we have a set of four priorities in the program, one of which is brand new to the North Sea program. That is our priority four on better governance. So these small scale projects would give the project applicants a way to uh, focus on these new things within a short amount of time. And Peter will be getting that to that a little bit later. So I think for all of these reasons, um, we, the, the program committee thought we should go for not just the regular projects that we, that we fund, but also a smaller scale, smaller scope type of project. Thank you very much. Very clear indeed. Uh, and uh, just to repeat, uh, those uh, more details will be available in guidance notes Correct. for each call yes. uh, where small scale projects will be uh, applied. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make them uh, attractive to you. So we would like to engage uh, uh, all organizations uh, interested in to submit a small scale project. But what are the parameters uh, of those uh, uh, projects? Uh, regulated by the program, uh, maximum 500,000 euros in total budget. Uh, so in total budget, uh, we are talking about and the maximum amount, uh, including the co-financing, uh, which is 60% in case of ERDF, so EU uh, uh, member countries, and 50% uh, if a partner is joining to the partnership from Norway. Mm -hmm. uh, Another financial aspect of a uh, small scale project is the use of uh, the 40% flat rate option on the basis of staff cost. So if you are uh, um, applying for funds in small scale projects, uh, you will define uh, your uh, staff costs and 40% of this staff cost uh, will finance or will cover uh, the rest of your budget meaning all the other costs like travel cost, external expertise, uh, equipment, uh, for example. Mm -hmm. So the other budget lines go into a flat rate uh, of 40% uh, based on the staff cost. There is also a recommendation uh, in terms of a minimum budget, uh, which is 200,000 euros. Uh, but again, I just want to emphasize this is a recommendation. So if you have a uh, some what less uh, budget uh, that is still possible for the monitoring committee uh, to select uh, the application of the project for mm -hmm. funding. So it is not uh, a very strict or very set in stone rule. Uh, uh, on the contrary, the maximum budget is yes. uh, set in stone 500,000 max. Uh, the lifetime of the project uh, is a maximum uh, 18 months, so one and a half years, uh, which is uh, considerable less than uh, we used to have in regular projects. Uh, so it is a, a shorter period of time uh, you have to uh, implement uh, a, a project. Also, number of partners are limited uh, between at least three partners, uh, and maximum seven partners can establish a partnership uh, for small scale projects. And an additional uh, requirement uh, in terms of partners is that uh, those uh, partners should come, uh, must come, sorry, at least from three different countries. So if you have the minimum number of partners, three partners, it means three different countries participating mm -hmm. in a project. Mm -hmm. I think uh, these are the main parameters mm -hmm. uh, uh, of the um, of the small scale projects, and then uh, we uh, will talk about uh, the benefits. What are the benefits uh, for uh, for uh, the uh, small scale project partners? Yeah. yeah, it's a really good question, and I mean, it's pretty simple um, from what you've just heard from Peter. Um, 
we're looking at projects that have simplified everything basically. So by that, I mean um, the application itself, which will be available soon in our online monitoring system um, is a simplified version of our full application, which is the, the, the second stage application for regular projects. While we do ask a lot of the same questions, because of course we need to know um, what the project's going to do, who's going to be in it, how much um, money do they need and so forth. Um, there will be a, it will be a slightly scaled down version of that so that the monitoring committee can make as, as, uh, as um, educated, educated is not the word, but anyway, <laughs> as wise a decision as they can on these, on these projects. In addition, the selection process itself is um, scaled down from the regular projects. And by that, I mean, for our regular projects, there is a two-stage two application proceed, procedure, except for call one, where we're allowing, in fact, project applicants to go straight to the full application. Um, that's a bit of a special uh, condition in, in call one. But some, uh, small scale projects only have one application and then the monitoring make, committee makes a decision um, based on that application. In addition, there's a LIAR project set up. And by that, I'm referring to the parameters that Peter just told us all about. Um, it's a shorter time frame. It's a smaller partnership. It's a smaller scope and scale of project. So in a sense, the administrative overhead is, is less than it is for a regular project. Um, and this follows uh, the complexity is also then less or reduced from that of a bigger, um, bigger project, longer lifetime regular project. Finally, uh, a benefit that you will see if approved is the reporting um, mechanism we're using for these projects. The projects can be a maximum of 18 months, and we will ask the projects to report twice during that lifetime, a midterm and a final report. So all of these taken together um, show that we're trying to offer you as a project community a way to run a, an idea, but with um, less of a, an administrative overhead and a little bit um, more intense um, implementation. That's right. Uh... Partly or a little bit of a uh, repetition, what uh, Sarah said uh, are uh, we're talking about differences and later on similarities to uh, to regular projects or between regular and small scale projects. Uh, as Sarah just said, uh, uh, there will be a slightly simplified application form because still we need or the monitoring committee will need the information uh, based on what they can select those projects. So it cannot be a one pager, it will be a proper application form, yeah. but still uh, slightly simplified. For example, as already mentioned, uh, uh, working with only one work package uh, uh, in, the, in the application and later on uh, during the implementation of the project. Selected in one step, which remains uh, throughout the program implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, so in case of regular projects, as Sarah mentioned, that will be the only exceptional case when they can mm. uh, be selected in one step. But in case of small scale projects, it will stay with us throughout the program implementation. So it will be always one step, only one application submitted based on what the monitoring committee will select uh, small scale projects. Uh, smaller, smaller in size, yeah. Uh, in terms of partnership, we recommend uh, for regular projects, eight to 15 partners. Uh, you saw uh, in small scale projects, we have three to seven uh, uh, partners. Uh, of course, the budget, uh, the regular projects in the past, so the historical yeah. data shows us it's about uh, four, 4.5 million euros in total budget uh, and uh, approximately four or five years uh, of project lifetime. Uh, again, you can already uh, remember uh, what has been said uh, in terms of uh, small scale project, we expect uh, yeah, smaller budgets, actually we regulate the budget and the partnerships as well, uh, and project lifetime. Easier reporting uh, 
compared to regular projects. Uh, what does it mean? In, in, in terms of uh, reporting, regular projects will have to still report every half a year uh, uh, and at least once uh, a financial claim to be submitted each year. Yep. Uh, while, as Sarah already uh, introduced, uh, the new uh, setup for small scale projects will be uh, only reporting twice and the midterm report uh, will be also somewhat uh, simplified uh, as we foresee. Uh, so the main message is here uh, that uh, you still have to uh, work on your application and preparation of your project mm -hmm. very hard, very uh, thought through applications will be selected, I believe, but the implementation uh, will be a lot more easier from program perspective, especially if you uh, are using, or if you will be able to use this 40% mm -hmm. uh, uh, flat rate option, which is still under discussion, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's assume that we will be able to use it and it is much easier mm -hmm. uh, for the small scale projects. And the similarities uh, are uh, that, those small scale projects uh, will have the same indicator set. Yep. Uh, they have to contribute uh, to the very same program level indicators. We don't have that many, by the way. No. Uh, so it won't be a, a very, really big uh, challenge to, uh, to uh, uh, select no. No, uh, exactly. the, the relevant indicator to your project. And yes. The webinar on that was on Monday, wasn't it? And yes. that is already up on the website. So in case you're interested in the indicators and the intervention logic, please have a look at that webinar. More details yes, available exactly. in, in this webinar. Mm -hmm. uh, so small scale projects are actually standalone projects. Yes. Uh, they have a standalone nature. Uh, Whatever they are uh, uh, doing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, whatever activities they uh, they uh, are uh, planning, mm -hmm. uh, they have to produce the very same uh, uh, outputs uh, and results yeah. uh, as regular projects do in a smaller scale. Mm, of course, so it is it is about target target values yes. uh, at the end of the day. So we, you will use. Uh, the same indicators, as I said, but choosing uh, a, a, a smaller uh, uh, target value. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're looking achieved. for projects that are trying to achieve something within that 18 months, um, coming out with an impact that could be carried on uh, beyond the project lifetime. Absolutely, so. absolutely. That's uh, that's uh, 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 actually that's also a similarity to regular projects, yeah. but with your small scale project. You can, uh, even though it is not a classic preparatory project, and we don't want to see preparatory projects, so writing another application, it, it won't fly. No. Uh, but preparing something bigger, uh, preparing a regular project uh, uh, in terms of content uh, in the North Sea program, or maybe in other uh, EU funding schemes, uh, beneficial for the North Sea region. That's the main point here to to. Uh, to develop yeah. uh, the region, to move on uh, with certain topics mm -hmm. in this region. Of course, with uh, with the, uh, from time to time, we can see it's global yeah. influence, but yeah. uh, uh, that's the aim. Uh, and yeah, uh, the, the last one uh, is the expectation of uh, high quality uh, applications and high quality of projects uh, stays yeah. uh, as with regular projects. So yeah. no um, that's very surprise important. here. That's very important. So please... <laughs> Uh, take this with you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, now I think uh, we can go back to uh, Slido. And uh, after all this information we provided you, uh, you might be able to answer this uh, uh, question that do you consider applying for a small scale project in Core 1? So please go to Slido. Uh, again, as you can see, the very same enter code and uh, QR code and uh, answer this question. Uh, there are three options uh, you can choose. Uh, yes, no, no idea. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I 
hope uh, the category of no idea, people will be convinced to go uh, to yes at the end of the day. Uh, I mean, or at uh, least start considering. <laughs> or, or start considering. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, this is what we expected actually. So it is totally new mm -hmm. for us, totally new for the project community. Yeah. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, further information you need to, uh, to uh, enter this uh, type of uh, uh, projects. Uh, and there are, yeah, yes, it's growing at 30% uh, around uh, uh, oh, even more. So maybe, maybe, maybe we, we, we managed to convince you uh, mm. uh, to, to go for it. Uh, but anyway, uh, we want to see a uh, lot of small scale projects in the first call. Uh, and hopefully the next uh, calls where you'll be able to use this uh, uh, new scheme uh, for uh, for project implementation. We, we will be happy to see project applications in all categories, of course, yes. um, yeah. but it'll be really interesting to see how the project community takes up this new initiative. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, and now, as I mentioned, there will hmm. be some limits, but yes. not that many. So, no. Sarah, what are those limitations? As you can see, there are two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and we have identified those just to give you an idea of um, what the program is looking at when we are talking about when will the, the small scale project uh, applications be accepted throughout the program period or not, uh, whether we're only having a certain number. And in fact, uh, at this moment, it is only decided that we will accept projects, uh, applications for small scale projects in the first call. And beyond that, we will see how it goes. Um, as we have said multiple times, this is a new initiative for the program. So we're also, um, we'll also be learning as we go, as it were. Um, but what we can say is that we will accept them in the first call. In addition, and this is related to that point, uh, the program committee has decided that there will be a limited number of small scale projects funded throughout the program period. So we will be seeing how it goes with call one, how many applications we get, how many are approved. And then based on that, the monitoring committee will make decisions uh, for the next call and subsequent calls. Thank you very much. Also on the purposes, as we have already stated, um, what what the small scale projects will focus on and be asked to focus on, which is always going to be outlined in the guidance note to that call. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and now, uh, actually, that's a, a natural question. Uh, if some of you or, 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 or maybe many of you already know the, uh, the priorities of the program, mm -hmm. how does it look like uh, with a small scale project? Yes, um, small scale projects will be accepted in all of our priority areas. As you can see here on this slide, we have our four priorities, um, robust and smart economies, green transition, climate resilience, and better governance. Within each of these, there's one to five specific objectives, and you can find the draft text for these specific objectives on our website in order to understand more about what challenges we're looking at addressing, what actions we hope to see support in, and so forth. In addition, another new initiative in this program period for the North Sea program are what we call spotlight themes. And there are three of those in this program, digitalization, rural urban linkages, and strengths and challenges in the North Sea Basin. And the basic premise of these spotlight themes is to allow projects to address them no matter which priority or which specific objective they choose to <clears throat> apply under. So it could be a project on digitalization within climate resilience or something about the North Sea and circular economy. Um, what small scale projects might allow us to do um, is have a, a targeted call for small scale projects on one of these themes in mm -hmm. the future. But back to the main point, we will accept small scale project applications in all of these priorities. Yeah, I think it makes uh, easier to, mm. to, to, uh, to think about small scale projects. You actually you are uh, looking at the whole program uh, uh, objectives mm -hmm. and set of objectives, and you can choose uh, which priority you, uh, you are targeting. Yes. 
So as said, and as you can see on the slide, uh, priority one is robust and smart economies with two specific objectives. Uh, the second one is the green transition with five different uh, specific objectives. Uh, the third one is climate resilience uh, with two specific objectives and better governance uh, with one. Um, we know it's maybe uh, too early uh, mm -hmm. to, to decide, but uh, let's give it a try. Uh, and uh, if you said yes, or uh, you are considering, or you are thinking of uh, a, a submission of a small scale project application, under which priority would you uh, submit your small scale project application? Please go to the same uh, uh, Slido. Uh, uh, poll and uh, and answer this question uh, under which priority would you submit a project proposal or application mm -hmm. uh, as a small scale project uh, and we will be able to see i hope uh, the results soon uh, so which uh, priorities uh, we see here uh, mm -hmm. Priority two is the winner uh, uh, so far. Mm -hmm. uh, priority one and uh, yeah, priority one is the second, uh, except the, the ones who are not sure which priority they would uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, submit an application. And priority three and four uh, are uh, the, yeah, the less, uh, uh, the less uh, targeted mm -hmm. at least uh, in this webinar. Yes, so yes. Uh, this is just out of curiosity. We yeah. wanted to check with you uh, which uh, which priority would be the most uh, interesting to you for small scale projects. Again, so I, I yeah. want to emphasize this. Uh, we are talking about, of course, about small scale projects. So uh, yes, uh, we can see uh, there is a difference between uh, priorities. Yeah. Talking about the first call, uh, mm -hmm. the official uh, opening of yes. the call uh, is expected uh, in December. The soft launch has already happened mm -hmm. uh, as for 1st of November uh, and the online monitoring system, the OMS, for small scale projects uh, will be opened uh, during the coming weeks, mm -hmm. uh, so very soon. Uh, you will be uh, informed about it during the or through the website yes. uh, of the program. So don't worry. Uh, there will be lots of information mm -hmm. uh, coming in the next week. So yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, and also, if you're joining to us uh, uh, the annual conference in Bruges, yes. uh, we will uh, be able to give you more information, mm -hmm. more detailed information, uh, in person, hopefully. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we already mentioned this, uh, uh, but the first call for proposals, it's a bit uh, special mm. uh, since we uh, will provide you the three entry points to the program. You can uh, submit uh, a small scale project uh, application, a regular project with a full application, or the first step uh, mm. as expression of interest for a regular project. So all three uh, entry points, application types mm -hmm. uh, will be available uh, in call one. As I said, it is a special case. Uh, from the second call, mm -hmm. it won't be uh, the same. No. Uh, so yeah, this is about kickstarting the program and uh, have as much as possible uh, uh, project initiatives uh, to, to enter the program mm -hmm. uh, very soon. This is about call one. Um, and uh, if we are looking at the next slide, um, which is about the tentative timeline, partly tentative. Yes, uh, yes, some of it's done. <laughs> because as you can see, the first two uh, uh, points are already covered. So the soft launch, as uh, I already said, happened uh, 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 happened on 1st of November uh, and the webinars for applicants are ongoing with this is 
being the the last one actually mm -hmm. yes. uh, and you will be able to uh, see all the webinars on web on our website the previous three are already available mm -hmm. and this one will be available uh, uh, this week mm -hmm. uh, so please go to our uh, website and uh, check those webinars if you if you want was not able to to join them yeah. uh, as i already told you uh, that uh, the first call opens officially uh, meaning you will be able to enter, enter the monitoring system and uh, 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 and uh, work on your mm -hmm. uh, projects uh, will uh, be open in, in december uh, and uh, the deadline for the submission mm -hmm. is foreseen in spring. We don't have a, a, a specific date no. for the for the deadline. It depends on a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what we can uh, uh, say uh, is that it will happen sometime in spring. We can also say that uh, you will have uh, enough time to work on your uh, uh, applications uh, before submission. Uh, what we aim at uh, is that small-scale projects uh, and hopefully expression of interest uh, will be selected already before summer break, mm -hmm. so around June next mm -hmm. year. Uh, we we've, we've really think that first uh, uh, proposals or for first uh, uh, selection run for small-scale projects could happen uh, before summer break. Mm -hmm. uh, for regular projects, we already see it won't be uh, uh, enough time to process uh, the regular projects uh, before summer break, so they will be selected after uh, summer break in September. Uh, this before is, yeah, this is also pending the um, approval of the program, which we would like to, to hope will be in the first half of 2022, but we don't know whether that will be the case where this is part of the reason the timeline is still tentative. So please stay tuned for that. Um, and uh, we keep our fingers crossed that we can stick to the timeline. Thank you very much. Th that's about uh, the, the timeline. And uh, yeah, uh, as we have a very short time today mm -hmm. uh, and uh, everyone is busy, we know, yeah. uh, but uh, don't worry, we are available. And Sarah, uh, what do you think about it? How, how applicants can, can get more information yes. about? It's a very good question. Um, we have several uh, mechanisms and, and means for helping you as the project community with your application or your project idea. Um, perhaps the, the biggest one uh, is the conference coming up. We have an event on the third day of our, our North Sea conference in Bruges called Get Ready. Um, and at that event, which is an entire day, we will be addressing different parts of uh, preparing your application, as well as consultations with those who would like to have uh, a talk with us in the JS and also with the national contact points about your project ideas. Um, that event has been formally closed, um, but we are looking forward very much to those of you who have registered for that. In addition, uh, we have uh, the Joint Secretariat here at your disposal to help with ideas, as well as our fantastic network of national contact points. We have contact points in France, Flanders, Netherlands, Germany, Sweden, and Norway. So each of these countries has one, uh, in, in the case of France, two national contact points ready to help you with your ideas, ready to help you find organizations that might want to join your project uh, from their countries. What we're planning and working on right now is a scheme by which we will have consultation periods or consultation hours, I guess you could say, online with project applicants, uh, where you can speak one-on-one -on -one with a project advisor, or by one-on-one, -on -one, I mean the project applicants as one and the advisor as one, um, and also be inviting the national contact points to join those. And we have a preliminary version of a project partner uh, mechanism for the website, which we will be launching very, very soon. So these will actually go hand in hand, these two, and we will be putting up more information about that very, very soon. So please stay tuned on the website again. Thank you very much. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, that's what we wanted to tell you at first uh, or at the beginning uh, of this uh, or introduction of this uh, new scheme we have in the program. Uh, and now it's time for questions. So uh, please go to Slido and pose your question. Maybe we have already some uh, questions. Yes, we have. Uh, and we will go one by one. So please feel free to pose your question uh, in Slido and we will uh, hopefully uh, be able to go through all of them. But if not, then we will come back to you uh, in another format. So the first question we have, uh, uh, I read it out loud, are expectations regarding communication dissemination similar to regular projects? Uh, the answer, you... yeah, it's pretty sim simple. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, and something that is new to the um, program from this period is that there will not be a specific work package on communications, even for regular projects. Communication activities will be expected to be incorporated in every work package that you have. So for small scale projects, because there's only one work package, we will expect that you include activities related to dissemination and communication of what you're doing in your project within that work package. That's, that's correct. There will be another uh, opportunity to describe the communication uh, uh, objectives and, mm -hmm. and activities you are planning in the application form, but uh, you have to integrate it in the work package. Mm -hmm. uh, another question, limited number of projects is not really an in incentive to put effort uh, in de uh, developing a project. Chances of success for smaller projects should be larger. Yes, fair enough uh, point. Um, but the, um, the program committee, because this is a new initiative, has decided that in the first instance, at least, they have an internal number um, that we will accept during the program period. Um, the monitoring committee can always make decisions during the program period to make changes to the program. So um, at the moment, we are quite wide open um, and expect and hope to get quite a few in call one, but it, call one is a test bed as it were. We don't know what the demand for these projects will be. Um, and we're very curious uh, to see how that's going to work. Um, so this is just because it is a new initiative that we have to balance both the funding that we have and, and the administrative work that we do in the Joint Secretariat to make sure that we provide the best quality uh, service and advice to our projects as possible. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Uh, I don't have anything no. to add, okay. so we can go to the, we can go to the next one. Uh, what does flat rate mean? I can take this one if Please. you want me to. Absolutely. Uh, flat rate. Uh, is uh, a type of uh, simplified cost option, which means that uh, one of the budget lines or budget uh, budget lines or cost category, uh, specifically in small scale projects, we are talking about staff cost. Uh, you can uh, or you have to plan this budget line or these budget items uh, as a real cost. So you can uh, still, uh, you, you will still have a control uh, uh, requirements and, and all uh, what we uh, used to have mm -hmm. uh, uh, for this uh, particular budget line. And based on this, 40% uh, is calculated covering all the other costs uh, in your budget, which means also that there is no uh, actual uh, control uh, happening uh, on those 40%. It is just, just, it is a number uh, in your financial claim. It doesn't mean that you don't have to be uh, careful enough with your procurement uh, rules and, and all the stuff that you have to uh, 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 take care take of, account, take, yeah. take, taken into account, uh, but it won't be controlled and audited from the program uh, uh, authorities. This is the basic of the simplified cost options and the flat rate uh, as such. I hope I answered your question. I think so. Let's see the next one. 
Could you update the website with the name and contact yes. of the French national contact point, please? Yes, absolutely. Practical question, and I think... And a very fair one. Very yes. fair one. Yes, we have two French national contact points that joined us this year, and uh, they've been very active in, in helping to prepare the new program since they joined. Um, by coincidence, uh, they have the same name, <laughs> Caroline. They are both based in Lille, France, and we will indeed uh, post their information to the website. How long will the first call be open? You said enough time, but more precisely, how much time? <laughs> yeah, you you caught me actually yes, exactly. <laughs> with this question. Uh, uh, as I also said, uh, we don't know the exact uh, deadline uh, for submission. And as also uh, said, there is a uh, uh, lot of uh, things happening in the meantime with the programming mm -hmm. committee and mm -hmm. the approval of the program, submission of the program to the uh, European Commission. So. There are a lot of uh, what ifs uh, mm -hmm. in the in the in, in the, the system, yeah. uh, uh, but uh, enough time. I would say couple of months for sure. Yeah. So if you are saying December, uh, then at least January and February. I would say yes, uh, easily that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the official launch of Call One. We are hoping for mid December. Um, this is based on two more meetings that we actually have to have with the program preparation before that uh, to get everything in place. And until that ha those happen, we cannot officially launch the program. But once it is officially launched, we will, of course, be giving you uh, the deadline for submission. And the deadline for submission for the small scale projects and the expressions of interest most likely will be a bit before the deadline for the full applications, which is reflected in the timeline that Peter explained, uh, because we hope very much to be able to have a monitoring committee to make decisions on the small scale projects and expressions of interest in June, followed by a second monitoring committee on the full applications after the summer holiday. Um, but we ask you to bear with us because as we have already stated, a lot is still in flux um, and we're, we're trying to move with this <laughs> moving yeah. target uh, as uh, best we can. And as we, uh... Unfortunately, we already uh, put this slide on that mm. in springtime we will mm. have the deadline. Uh, so uh, it's fair enough to say that it won't be earlier than 1st of March. Yeah. Regarding the goal, attracting new regions, does it mean that the project with new regions partners has a higher chance to be awarded than old region projects? Uh, yeah. I don't think so, but no. uh, if you can elaborate on, on that sure. one more. Absolutely. No, it will not mean that you have an advantage over other projects. Um, it is simply a mechanism uh, that we hope will attract new organizations and pro, uh, partners from the new regions. So um, it's to, to try to bootstrap them, I guess you could say, but it doesn't mean that the monitoring committee would choose them over another. Yes, exactly. And uh, actually the other way around, that it, it, it might be attractive for newcomers mm -hmm. with this easier, lighter setup to, to start with, mm -hmm. and then uh, hopefully going for regular projects later on during the program implementation. I think that's also Absolutely. Uh, a message here. Yes, but the monitoring committee, I mean, the bottom line here is that the monitoring committee makes decisions on project applications based on the quality based on many criteria that are outlined in one of our fact sheets that we will be putting up on our website on the assessment criteria. Um, they, they have to take many factors into account when they make their decisions, but it, they take their decisions on the project application as a whole. Could you describe how regularly, when the next calls can be expected throughout the program? Regular and small scale projects once a year in December, yeah, <laughs> we are not there yet. Um, we are just starting to announce, um, as we've said, the call one. And we are very aware that a schedule of calls uh, needs to be set up. And we are working on that, but we have not completed it at this time. Again, back to what we've been saying, because there are other factors uh, still at play that would impact that schedule. Thank you. How many small scale projects are expected to be accepted in call one? There is no number 
that is expected to be accepted in call one is the simple answer. We have no idea how many applications we get. We have no idea how many of those applications will reach the standard that the monitoring committee would approve. So there is no number um, that we can expect. Also, again, because it's a new initiative, we don't know um, how many uh, to expect. Absolutely, that's an unknown territory. Actually, we are entering mm -hmm. uh, with this. Uh, uh, but um, yeah, um, I think uh, the, the the background of this question is whether how competitive uh, uh, environment mm -hmm. uh, partnerships enter uh, if they are going for a small scale project. We don't know. That's the clear answer. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we used to say that also a little uh, challenge or a little uh, competition doesn't hurt. And if you have uh, prepared a small scale projects but not being selected, it is not necessary because uh, uh, it is absolutely nonsense or absolutely not fitting the program. Uh, it might be used later on for an expression of interest as content mm. uh, or uh, uh, work uh, ahead uh, and work moving on with the work elaboration uh, on the concept or the project idea uh, can be kept alive yes. uh, uh, later on. Hopefully, we will be able to select as many as we see high quality. Yes, uh, we will see. When tackling a specific objective, both by a small scale and a regular project, what differences exist between both project types? For example, scope and activities? Well, I think the easy answer to that question, Peter, is that the scope of the small scale projects is simply smaller. Um, we're looking for a, a project that focuses on one work package, which means by necessity, in a sense, uh, the number of activities will be smaller. Um, in regular projects, we're looking for roughly three work packages. Um, there can be more, but it depends on the activities and what the project wants to achieve. In the small scale project, it's very much limited to this one work package. So it's a very focused project type. Um, other than that, um, I don't know that there's much difference, is there? No, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, it is rather a, 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 a smaller uh, intense. target, Int yeah. very intense, uh, but still you can have uh, a pilot. Mm -hmm. A demonstration, uh, a demonstration, feasibility study. Feasibility study for just to mention a few examples, what we uh, think uh, those projects will cover. Yeah. Uh, and uh, th this is also very important to, mm -hmm. to say that it is, uh, or repeat again, uh, they are targeting the very same program objectives yes. and, and uh, indicator set. So uh, Along those lines, you can you will be able to uh, to identify what goes uh, to a small scale project. Yeah, with the, the expectation that the targets on those outputs and results will be smaller, of course. Yeah. Um, but I think, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> um, it, it's important to keep in mind that within the activities of that work package for a small scale project, you do have to include communication and dissemination activities. And something we haven't talked about, but is important is that there is no work package on project management in the new program, the way there is in this one, but there is still a place in the application form for you to describe how you are going to manage your project. And that is expected of small scale projects as well. Exactly, exactly. Uh, the next question, can a small scale project develop a strategy uh, slash approach, which then can be applied in a regular project? Yes. I think yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the answer is yes, but I think we have to go back to your point on standalone. Um, these projects are expected to achieve something within their project lifetime. And if the natural outcome of such a project is to then move to a regular project application, great. We will be very um, happy to see that. But the goal of the small scale project cannot be to apply for a regular project. I think that's yeah. the important distinction here. Um, so yes, if you were to develop a strategy or an approach that by the end of the project, you see, okay, this is what we have achieved. This has been um, a very valuable project in itself, but we see a lot of potential for this to move to something bigger, to something wider, then um, that is very welcome. Yes, I agree, yeah. What maximum reasonable budget of a small scale project 
uh, all partners together would you recommend yeah it depends <laughs> on the it depends on the activities yeah. it depends on the number of partners because if you look at the uh, the um, uh, the framework or the parameters we uh, we just uh, uh, presented a maximum budget of 500,000 euros uh, in, in budget in total budget means if you have five partners for example then each if you are uh, uh, breaking it down mm -hmm. uh, equally yeah. 100,000 euros and so it goes down so if it is uh, only 200,000 with five projects it means 40,000 euros total budget uh, not to mention even if you have uh, uh, less budget and more mm. or more partners mm. so you you should be uh, able to 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 draw up uh, uh, your budget accordingly mm -hmm. uh, so there is no real recommendation there is only a, um, um, a limit set in stone the upper limit which is 500000 euros and all the other things depending on the activities and the number of partners uh, you decide yeah but with um as with regular projects um the, the the monitoring committee takes the the project as a whole or the project application as a whole into consideration does the budget make sense with the activities that you describe with the partnership exactly. that you describe and if it is proportionate and it makes sense to them um as a as an entire package then i think um there is no reasonable budget per se it really it really is specific to the project When is the next call after this one? I think we partly covered this yeah. uh, question. It's related to the previous one about previous one. what is yeah. our schedule. Uh, we don't know that at this moment, but um, as we have said, it is on our gen agenda for, for working on very, very soon. Um, what will be a rough idea of the calls throughout the period once we have call one secured? Is flat rate for staff mandatory or just an option? That's a good question. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, it is still uh, under discussion. Uh, we have this 40% uh, uh, flat rate uh, uh, option uh, by now, but it will be decided by the program preparatory uh, uh, committee in two weeks time. No, next week. Next week, actually. Next week. Yeah. So we will, we will know more about it. This is what we uh, propose. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for this uh, uh, preparation committee, but we cannot say 100% that it will uh, be like this. It is what is decided is that this um, simplified cost option is going to be an, used for small scale projects. The question is whether there will be yet Another. one more option. For yeah, projects. yeah, that's so, true. That's true. Yeah. So the option will will be there. Not necessarily that will be the only. Correct. Option. Correct. Deadline for small scale projects applications is in November 2021. Oh, okay. but decisions are taken in June. Yeah, I think that is a misunderstanding. The deadline for these project applications is not this month. The call for proposals or the call for applications is opening. So by the soft launch, we mean this basically this preparatory period, I guess you could say, where we start to inform the project community about the rules. We are opening the online monitoring system exactly. so that you can start working in applications, but the actual applications will not be due until, as Peter has already said, March 1st at the very earliest of next year. On your website, can we see who is searching for partners for the first call? And that relates to what I said under the help for applicants. Um, in fact, we have something that is almost ready to be launched and it will be on our website and it will be a, a form where you fill in your project idea and, and the partners that you are looking for, the types of partners you're looking for. Um, and then it can be posted to the website and others can see it so that they might join that. Um, so indeed that will be ready very, very soon on our website. Is subcontracting experts from outside North Sea region, but within the EU member states possible? Yes, yeah. yes, it is. I think, yeah, it is up to the procurement rules, of course, exactly. always uh, whom do you select, but yes. uh, the experts will work on a project, which is 
based uh, based in uh, the... and the program and and uh, uh, beneficial for the region so exactly. i think uh, i think it is it is up to yeah. uh, uh, to to select external experts mm -hmm. um, from other member states uh, yeah thank you very much these were th that was the last question as i as i'm as i heard uh, from colleagues uh, and uh, we are also about to close this webinar yes. because uh, the time is flying so uh, thank you very much all of your uh, uh, attendance and, and, and participation and uh, for your questions. Uh, as I said, uh, this webinar will be also available on our website mm -hmm. uh, later this week. The other two, uh, other three uh, uh, webinars are already there, so you can you can watch them. Uh, you can you can prepare your project ideas. You can contact us uh, mm -hmm. if needed. Uh, and uh, hopefully many of you, uh, we will be able to see each other uh, in Bruges yes. uh, in two weeks time. Uh, and uh, yeah, good luck with all your uh, applications uh, uh, in, the, mm. in, the, in the coming months. And yeah. Thank you. All the best. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you.